Chavez, the older of the two by a couple of years. Otherwise, really not much to choose. Reach advantage for Dwight Pratchett. But I'll tell you, he is in there against the buzzsaw tonight. I think you're really going to like Julio Cesar Chavez, and he's going to get tested somewhat by Pratchett, too. Let's take a look at how Julio Cesar Chavez fights his fights. He's a banger. There's no question about that. And I think the fact that he does not score a high percentage of punches as opposed to the amount of punches he throws, punches landed, that is, the amount of punches he throws, I think is indicative of the fact that he is a guy who's just going to go right after you. There's no question about that. So that is a look at how Julio Cesar Chavez fights. And here, on the other hand, is a look at how Dwight Pratchett fought in a close loss to Juan Laporte. He landed just about 30-some percent of his punches. So they are comparable in terms of what percentage of punches they land, but in terms of how effective those punches are, well, Chavez is strictly the better of the two. Here's the way the WBC rules are. Ten-point must system. Three judges score the fight. There will be no stand eight count you could only be saved by the bell in the final round and the ring doctor can stop the fight so right now let's get up to the center of the ring and the ring announcer here in las vegas chuck hall chuck good evening ladies and gentlemen once again welcome to the riviera hotel sports arena where tonight the dynamic duo don king and butch lewis in association with the riviera hotel presents history a september to remember these bouts are sanctioned by the Nevada State Athletic Commission, Sig Rogic chairman, with the commissioners at ringside, Dwayne Ford, Art Lurie, Sammy Macias, and Freddie Little, along with the executive director, Harold Buck. The officials assigned for the next bout of the evening, the judges are Paul Smith, Senor Miguel Donante, Senor Jorge Ruiz Valesco, and the timekeeper is Mike Morabito, Counting in the knockdowns is Al Bicek. Your referee is Davy Pearl. This is a featured event of the evening. 12 rounds of boxing for the WBC Super Featherweight Championship of the World. Introducing, in the blue corner, the challenger, fighting out of Gary, Indiana, weighing 128 and one quarter pounds, with a professional record of 13 wins, Six defeats with seven KOs. Ladies and gentlemen, introducing the challenger, Dwight Too Tough Pratchett. And in the red corner, ladies and gentlemen, from Culiacan, Mexico, weighing in at an even 130 pounds. His professional record consists of 45 wins, no defeats, with 41 KOs. I would call your attention to the fact that he is wearing a black sash on the side of his trunks in mourning for the deaths of the victims of the earthquakes in Mexico City. Ladies and gentlemen, introducing the WBC Super Featherweight Champion of the World, Julio Cesar Chavez. Only one guy, only one guy, one guy. Somebody get out. I remember what I told you in the dressing room. Okay. Keep this a clean fight. Shake hands and good luck. Okay. So, your first look at the super featherweight champion, Julio Cesar Chavez, his third title defense. He's beaten some quality opponents, too, right? Well, when he knocked out Roger Mayweather, that's when he, he, he uh, impressed me as being a guy who could take a punch and give a punch. Larry Merchant has joined us also. You've seen Chavez fight, Larry? Just on television, this is my first look at him in person. Very impressive young man. If he stays on the track somewhere down the road, he could have a fight with Hector Camacho that would be as big as Ray's fight with Tommy Hearns. The title that he holds is the title, in fact, that Hector Camacho vacated, the super featherweight title. I'm, I'm really surprised by Chavez. Normally he's a very aggressive fighter. I think what he's doing now is pretty much trying to feel pressured out, trying to see what type of punch he possesses. Chavez, one of 10 children. Pratchett, one of 16 children. They could have sold the place out just in their siblings. Come on, punch. All right, hold it up. Get up. Get up. Hold Pratchett, up. a tough loss to Juan Laporte. Very loose when I tell you that. Interesting when his most impressive performance is a loss, but it was to a quality opponent. Chavez can punch. That was a pretty good uppercut by Pratchett, but it got Chavez on the way back. Right 
right hand. And in Chavez, there is concentration. I mean, when he when they execute a punch, it's with authority, it's with, it's with power, and it's accurate. And he's on balance also. The more I see Chavez, the more I'm impressed because he, he's, he improves every fight. Very dedicated fighter, anxiously learning how to speak English now because he figures wisely that it will help him in his career. Good looking kid. Well, Pratt is trying to get his punches in in the very first round. He ran to the right hand, didn't seem to do too much damage. In fact, Pratchett appears to be so much smaller than Chavez. There was a right hand again. He's running to the, into the right hand mainly because he drops his hand as he comes in. Chavez punches just sound like they have so much authority. I down toward the end of the first round. And we, incidentally, will have an interpreter in Julio Cesar Chavez's hand, corner, hand. Tito Alba, on hand to help us out with that. So you'll hear a simultaneous interpretation of just what is going on in the corner of the champion, Julio Cesar Chavez. And around one. Right here, do it. A feeling out round, obviously, for Chavez. And here's Larry Holmes. We're going to do the thing right here at the Riviera, knocking out the Sphinx. We're talking about the that they respect him to try to knock him out fast, so he's got to be very careful and watch him very closely and be a little bit more very careful and watch him very closely and be a little bit more uh, a little faster. Even for a feeling out round, uh, Chavez did look to be going at a rather lethargic rate. So we'll see if he doesn't pick up the tempo here in the second round. Chavez in the red trunks, Pratchett in the white trunks. And Pratchett pressing Chavez a little bit here. Chavez has been elusive. He has not been hit by any big bombs thrown by Pratchett. He moves his head very well. But it's time now to throw his own bombs. Pratchett staying right on top of Chavez. Do you agree with that strategy, Ray? Well, I think um, for Pratchett, his best bet, because not really a, a one-punch knocker out of his best bet is to use his boxing skills. And you saw Chavez indicate to Davy Pearl that he was being butt. You see inside, when Pratchett goes inside, he's not that effective. He's better on the outside. Get your hands off his neck. Chavez just seemingly in control, hasn't really fired the big bombs yet. Chavez is going to do something. The way I see uh, Pratchett, he throws punches and he now. drops. Pratchett. He stoops, and he's doing it repeatedly. So what Chavez may do, he may bring some punches under. He has a timer. The right hand there, Lan. Chavez's hero, Ruben Olivares, youngest Mexican champion ever. And of course, Salvador Sanchez, who he says he's never met, but he has seen on television, very likely on, right here on HBO, prior to his tragic death. Chavez doesn't specialize in the left jab. He Take your hands off primarily likes now. the right hands and left hooks. His left jab is pretty much a, something to measure for the right hand. Good combination by Pratchett that did right. get in. Look at the way he digs to the body. Punch out, your hands are free. Watch your head now, watch your head. Patrick posing a bit of a problem here for Chavez right now. He's staying on top of him, and he seems to have 
the champion not so much in trouble, but just a little bit confused. Well, normally Chavez is a relentless fight. He stays on top of his, his opponent, just the way he did with uh, Roger Mayweather. And then Los now, get your hand off. He uh, is content to just kill his man out for another round. The other man has been hurt. Pratchett has been the aggressor in the fight, and Chavez has kind of sat back and just watched the goings on. Keep him up now. Chavez has 45 fights under his belt. Won them all, 41 of them by knockout. So he's dangerous, there's no question about that. Get up. Down to the end of the second round now. Hold it, hold it! Well, I think a case can be made that Pratchett has won the first two rounds of the fight, at least on my part. And he's posing some opposition, and uh, I think that's good for Chavez, and it's good for us. Not much going on there. I guess they're happy with what they're seeing. Looking good, son. Although he has a, a long reach advantage, Pratchett isn't using it. He's just going right at Chavez. I know the first rounds are very difficult, but you have to take it easy and keep on uh, hitting low on the low side of his body. So we start the third round, and in Chavez's corner, they're telling him to stay downstairs. That'll bring the man's arm down, and then he can go headhunt. Take your hands off his neck. Meantime, Pratchett showing himself very well. Well, he doesn't have to look for uh, Pratchett because he's been there for the past two rounds. He um, has chosen to stand toe to toe with a devastating puncher as Chavez. Uh, hold it up, break. Step out. Well, as we mentioned earlier, the most impressive Pratchett has been was in a 10 round loss to Juan Laporte, but the <laughs> indicative number there is 10 rounds. He did go the distance. Now Chavez started to dip. That left hook to the body. It's a thing of beauty, Barry, because you can see the results. You can see uh, something taking place in a fighter. Those hands start to drop. His movement slows down a great deal. There's blood showing, actually, on the ribs of Julio Cesar Chavez, but I can't really tell where the blood is coming from. It's coming off the gloves, apparently, but I don't see either fighter marked on the face. Hands off his back. Chavez is finding it really quite difficult to get some clean punches in. Good body shot, but it's difficult to uh, land a good punch on Pratchett for, for the time being because his hand, he keeps his hand very hot, which is a good habit. Once again, there's signs of blood, but I can't really tell where that blood is coming from. We'll try to see if they're working on either of these fighters in the corner between rounds. This is going to turn out to be a, a fight of strength and power. And I'm sure Chavez should win on power. He's proven it in 41 knockouts. So far, though, Pratchett's getting his punches off quicker than Chavez. Oh, there's no question about it, though. He has the, the quicker hands. But the power has to go to Chavez. But Chavez can't get his punches off too cleanly because Pratchett stays very close. Neither man has been hurt. This is the third round. You have to wonder how much of this can Pratchett take. Is any big puncher? It's an accumulation. It Keep takes his toe. His Keep your hands off his neck now. Pratchett being told by Davy Pearl to keep your hands off his neck, and Pratchett is holding a little bit with the left hand. Well, he's making Chavez fight. Chavez is finding it difficult to get some punching room. Oh, and Pratchett actually dropped his hands and walked away. There, there is seen to be blood coming from the mouth of Pratchett. Get your hand off. It could be his lip or his jaw. It was jaw, exactly. Hold it, hold he just it. dropped his hands and walked away, and uh, you couldn't help but think he was hurt. Don't take that phone off. 
He has a bloody mouth, Pratchett. Who's his mouthpiece? And they can't find his mouthpiece. I gave it to you. What happened to his mouthpiece? You didn't give me his mouthpiece. No, you didn't. The mystery of the disappearing mouthpiece. Did he go out without a mouthpiece, Ray? I'm sure he, he, he did. <laughs> They're hollering for a mouthpiece. Somebody go downtown and buy a mouthpiece. Well, normally you have two mouthpieces in the corner. But this doesn't happen often. Spit it out. And there is the new, bigger Michael Spinks warming up. Uh, Superman, Super yeah. Spinks. Keith and I believe while we were watching Michael Spinks that his corner did indeed slip a mouthpiece into Pratchett's mouth, but I'm not 100% sure. I'm not either, Larry, and he's still bleeding <laughs> from the mouth, too. No, they gave him a mouthpiece. And this is a good thing because those punches are going to the chin. That was a big left hand by Chavez, and I believe Pratchett is hurt. Hold it up. Hold he took a better up. punch Get without up. the mouthpiece. Hold for. Cut it out. Chavez now is just start trying to measure Pratchett. It's all power now. You will, you will see a different Chavez, a more aggressive Chavez, a much more effective Chavez. I think he, ha he's, he has his man Get figured out now. Drill those shots to the body. Hard shots to the body. Up, up, to, the, up to the head, down to the body. Good right hand there, too. And another right hand. And you're right, he's really starting to measure his man now. Oh, he has him figured out now, Barry. Coming right over the left hand of Dwight Pratchett. What he's doing now, actually, he's just trying to take his man apart piece by piece. He's putting his punches together. It's not one punch anymore, it's two punches and three. Punch out. Celebrities. Uh, punch out. Chavez keeps that left foot out. I like that because he's getting, he, he maintains his balance that way. Plus, he gets he's able to get the leverage behind each punch. Very, a lot of fighters make the mistake of putting both feet together. Every one of Chavez's punches has that sound of authority to it. Well, he's getting the snap behind each punch, which means he's delivering each punch properly. Pratchett has a pretty good chin. He's been hit by some good shots thrown by uh, Chavez. But it's a matter of how much of this can he take. Pratchett's record a little bit deceiving because, as we mentioned, he's had impressive performances against both Juan Laporte and against Jimmy Paul, tough Detroit fighter. Went the distance against both those men. So he's a tough kid. Hands off his back. I think Chavez has taken Pratchett's best. Watch your shoulders now. Watch your elbows. He's really going to be. Pratchett has done a very good job of smothering the punches of Chavez, not giving him punching one. Only a few times Chavez was able to land with this one. Tell him blows. He's punching. Your hands are free. The best Mexican fighters often are devastating body punchers, and Chavez looks like he is in that tradition. Grease, Chuck. Hey, David. How's on, Chuck? Grasa, Vaselina. Uh, Vaseline, how do you feel? Okay. You have to work him out. He is cut and you are okay. You got to go faster. When you have a, a, a long chat, uh, hit him with the left. Use your left hand more often. And take it easy because uh, you are better than him. You, you, there are the numbers on Dwight Pratchett. Impressive numbers, but that's just a, 
a statistical survey. It doesn't really tell you the impact of the punches that are being thrown or landed. This is the fifth round. You see a different Chavez. He's starting to pick up the rhythm, pick the pace up. Starting to get a feel of things. Chavez seems to do all the things right, as you mentioned earlier. Now, Davey Pearl said he's going to take a point away from Dwight Pratchett for holding. He's been hooking him behind the neck with a left hand. He's been doing it rather consistently. What I was going to say about Chavez is that he does always seem to be on balance. He doesn't waste too many punches. He's a very intelligent fighter, and he does pretty much what his corner tells him to do. Oh, beautiful left hook by Chavez. And he put a lot of power. It was a good snap. It, it uh, rocks Pratchett for a second there. In his corner, between rounds, they said throw the left, and here we are into the fifth round, just about halfway through, and that's exactly what he's been doing. You can see the damage of that left hook thrown by uh, Chavez by the desperation of a Pratchett. Whether he forgets about uh, the basic fundamentals of boxing and all of a sudden turns into a street fight, that's an indication that a fight is hurt. Or yeah, uh, one of the indications. He's actually fallen into the punches thrown by Chavez. Good right hand. Very good right hand. Beautiful right hand. Got Pratchett's attention. Chavez with power in both hands. He's a mechanic. He's a technician, but I like the way he delivers those punches to the body. Very poised fighter. And never change expression. No, he's baby face to begin with. Sort of impassive expression. Another good right hand. A good counter right hand. Left hook rocked does Pratchett just a second there. His knees buckled. And for a second, he started to retreat. Time! Time! Time. I'm taking a point away. Davy Pearl taking a point away from Dwight Pratchett. He warned him on about three different occasions. Well, that's the way Pratchett has a fight. Chavez has to tie him up and hold him. If you take that away from him, I think he'd be in a little trouble. And we come to the end of round number five. The great Pratchett Ray is you get your second fighting one. Chavez the yeah. way you huh? should fight him. You should go at a guy who likes to come forward and try to back him up. But of course, then it becomes a test of strength, and he's just... Out muscles in like a dog against Chavez. Starting to show on him. Take this, take this and run it. Let's watch Chavez work in close. A good chopping right hand and the left hand over the top. 45 and 0, Chavez. Mexican fighters don't have long amateur careers the way many Americans do. They fight a lot of four-rounders on their way up. Sixth round of this Super Featherweight Championship fight. Fight like this, of course, featuring Larry Holmes and Michael Spinks, always attracting folks from just about every walk of life, celebrities from every walk of life. There are a number of entertainment people, boxing people. I've seen Muhammad Ali here, Mr. T sitting next to him, Clubber Lang. Step out. Hector Camacho is on hand here, a number of celebrities from show business. Punches are now starting to really wear down Pratchett. He's been standing toe to toe punch out. Turn him with a good puncher punch out. Now your hands are like free. Chavez. And he's held his own pretty much. 
He's, he's uh, tied Chavez up, stay close, not allowing Chavez to get in some clean punches. But the punches that has landed were sharp punching, and a couple punches at times hurt him. Watch your heads now. Watch those heads. The biggest punch that Chavez has been able to land has been that beautiful left hook of his. Chavez just seems to be wearing Pratchett down, not, not really in any kind of a hurry. Trying to make all his punches count, not wasting a lot of punches. Davey Pearl, you can hear on numerous occasions saying, watch your heads. He doesn't want this fight marred by a headbutt. Good right hand by Chavez. Set it up with a left of the body, and he came over the top of the right. Get your hands up. Pratchett has been trying to gain some type of respect from Chavez, and I think he has to a degree. And he stayed around a lot longer than many people thought he would. Well, he's he's been hit by some shots, a couple of good punches, and uh, he still he remains standing. Right, no elbows. Wondering about stamina. Julio Cesar Chavez has gone 10 rounds. He has never, however, gone beyond 10 rounds, and there is a possibility thereof that he may be doing that. He, he's really only gone 10 rounds on two other occasions, however, not since 1983, and before that, not since April of 1982. Two good left hands. Yeah, buddy. And here is Larry Holmes once again. A great champion. Is he still a great fighter? We want to remind you that premiering Thursdays at 7 o'clock, it's Inside the NFL with Nick Bonacani and Len Dawson. This week, we take the show on the road to St. Louis. We'll visit with the St. Louis Cardinals. I had a little help from a couple of my friends there. We're watching the fight tonight, I'm sure. Dave Galloway and Tootie Robbins, you'll see them. We'll be talking with Neil Lomax, the quarterback. Let's get back to the doings here. And here's an overhead shot of Cesar Chavez practicing his craft. That one looked like it came out of a textbook. But you have to give young Pratchett some credit. He comes from Gary, Indiana, and he has some steel in him. Steel town, steel fighter. And Pratchett is still right in the face of Julio Cesar Chavez. So very much as he was against Juan Laporte, he's not a serious threat to win the fight, barring the unforeseen, but He's the kind of guy who could be around when it's over. And now cut has opened up. But you know, Barry, I, I would disagree. I think he is a threat because he can take a punch. And he has a lot, a lot of determination. And he's a young kid. It depends on how much of this he can take. Hold your hands off. But he actually looks like he's wearing down. It really looks that way. But he's not giving up. As he mentioned, Chavez, doesn't waste too many punches, and the punches that he does throw are very, very tough punches, hard punches. He's heavy-handed, as they say about fighters. Pratchett bleeding from the nose now, Keep also. Keep him up. And again, you could just see how hard the punches that Chavez throws are. The left eye of um, Pratchett is starting to swell. And it's due to that right hand. I'm sure tomorrow morning is when Dwight Pratchett is gonna feel this fight the most. Your hands off it, Mike. Starting to weaken now. Get in there against guys who 
can hit as hard as Chavez. I remember you telling me the story of Marco Soraldo, who it makes you want to give up because the guys that possess good power in both hands proves to be um, a tough score for you. Marco Soraldo is not a name that you're going to remember from boxing, but Sugar Ray Leonard will remember it. Well, he's a big guy. In fact, I was a little guy moving up to his weight. It's the same thing we have here in the light heavyweight to the light heavyweight fighting heavyweight. Come on, punch. Watch your heads now. Meanwhile, Pratchett just kind of leaning a little bit more on Chavez now, but of course he's very conscious of not holding him. He's had a point taken away by referee Davy Pearl already for doing that. And just about every time they get in an exchange, Pratchett gets the worst of it. And he is conscious of not holding Chavez behind the head. And it really breaks his concentration. Just about dusk here in Las Vegas now as we come near the end of round number seven. There's another good right hand from Chavez, and they are really starting to mount up. Pratchett landed a good shot just then. Dwight Pratchett is valiantly taking a beating. You wonder how long he'll want to go on. Crossing with the uh, right. Uh, with Easy the enough for you, you to say. You <laughs> a, a tough fighter, but he only has two more rounds to go. And that's a realistic appraisal from Chavez's corner. So we come to round number eight. This fight scheduled for 12 rounds, incidentally. That's the WBC limit. Just started to take hold, and it is still very warm here at 20 oh, minutes to seven on, on the now. desert. On, it is 85 degrees. There is a nice little breeze, and that's going to help Michael Spinks if anyone. I would have to think, Ray, that this is probably a good fight for Chavez. He, I'm sure, even in his mind, he didn't expect to be around this long, but it's a pretty good test for him. Well, he's fighting a fighter that um, is young and aggressive and as durable. This is a very good fight. Come on out. Everybody was hold thinking it, that it. this was just a showcase fight for Julio Cesar Chavez and that Pratchett was just another pebble in the river for him, but that has not been the case at all. He's been a rock. This is when conditioning comes in. Chavez now is throwing three punches, and the last punch ends with a body shot. And Pratchett is backing up, and Chavez is right on top of him. It's one of those fights where the outcome is not at all in doubt, and about all you can say is that Pratchett is dead game, but that really becomes overworked, and it's all as a good right hand forces him back, and Pratchett's really hurt now. It's all arm punches now thrown by Pratchett. He appears to be ready to go now. One good punch, one good right hand should put him down. He's just about out. His legs are gone. And I would have to think you're right, one punch. And he glanced over towards uh, Davy Pearl. Look at the body shot. That right hand to the body really hurt him. He folded over. His arm, he's throwing arm punches now. He's ready to go. Nothing left in the punches of Dwight Pratchett. He put up a gain show though. I was going to say, it's by saying an opponent is dead game is just a way of saying he's taking a beating. Well, he has time to survive with less than 30 seconds. But the next round may be it, the way it looks. 
the legs of Pratchett are starting to fail him now. He's starting to put both feet together. If Pratchett's handlers like Pratchett, and if they want him to fight in the future, if I were them, I'd stop this fight right now. I would agree, Larry. He's a young man, and uh, there are many more good fights left hey, for him. Hey, Dad. <laughs> Michael Spinks is in good humor. Your daddy miss you, baby. I'll see you later. <laughs> He's very Michelle relaxed. His <laughs> young daughter seems relaxed. <laughs> And here is Chavez. Okay, you're going to recuperate. He only has three more minutes to fight. Uh, you're doing it well, uh, but you got to give him more pressure. One minute with the left, one minute with the left. This is, this is round, round number nine, he says. I hate to see Pratchett going out for more of this punishment. I absolutely concur. He's a beaten fighter right now. There's no way he is going to win this fight. And he accredited himself well. He would not leave the ring with his head bowed. There's no question about it. What you're going to see, Barry, you're going to see a little electricity coming from Pratchett for about uh, 30 seconds, and then he'll start to fade again. Not too much bounce with his legs. You can see now he's just running in. Chavez's corner telling him to use the left hand. Good shot to the body by Chavez. It's going to be tough rolling on the side, on the right side of uh, Pratchett. His ribs are going to be right, quite sore. Took another right hand right to the side of the face and another, and there's a left hand. And that left eye of Pratchett is starting to uh, swell more and more. Chavez needs to come back with the, with the uh, left hook. I think that was the right hand, because the right hand has been landing consistently. He needs to just follow up. Because you'll notice, once the right hand lands, Press is still standing. Standing straight up. Chavez just mixing it up, going downstairs, going upstairs. Complete victory for Julio Cesar Chavez. Pratchett breathing through the mouth now. Chavez just gave a step to the right and tried to throw the right hand. Every punch he throws, he's perfectly on balance. One he's of the things just, I really like about him. He's just picking his shots now, Barry. Just taking his time. Good right hand to the body. And Pratchett again continues to breathe very laboriously through the mouth. This type of pounding from a, a, a good fight, good champion like Chavez is really detrimental to a, a young fighter, upcoming fighter like Pratchett. is really keeping a good eye on Pratchett. And as long as he's, uh, his eyes are clear and he's still throwing punches and protecting himself, he will let it continue. Get your hands off. But this is almost a, this is a no-win situation for Pratchett. Yeah, there's nothing to be proven by this going on any longer than it has. Survival. You okay? Yeah. That's huh? the name of this game for Dwight Pratchett. Pratchett. It's, a, it's almost awake in his corner. Come on, You hear me? Come on, He's got a cut on his bottom. Look. You saw the doctor poking his nose in and ask him if he, Pratchett, if he was all right. He said, I'm all right. You got his mouthpiece? Suck it up. I got it. Put some power on some of them right hooks now. 
Yeah, when you hit him with your Son, you're doing your you're best. Hurting, son. That's right. You heard him. You shouldn't right be in here anymore. Well, it should be a more organized corner for Pratchett. Much more experience. This is the tenth round. Still two to go. Brother, they really did, they didn't do anything to revive Pratchett. Putting ice behind the neck, behind the head, and putting some water on his butt. In fact, they could bring some of that swelling down from Pratchett's left eye. And uh, a good a good tool to use is that piece of metal that Angelo used when I fought Thomas Hearns. And what is the principle of that? Well, because it, it keeps it in ice and it applies pressure and it stops the swelling. Which well, slows down the process. Good combination by Chavez. Three punch combination. This fight here for Pratchett is equivalent because of the in, intense and, and powerful punches thrown by Chavez. It's equivalent to about five or ten good hard fights. Yeah, it's one of those fights that's almost as a broadcast, but almost nothing you could say. Very lopsided fight. Pratchett way over his head. What he, but you know, Barry, he won't quit. That's about all you could say. For the first maybe six, seven rounds, it looked pretty good. But at this point now, it's one-sided because this is when experience is coming in. Chavez is proving it. Chavez, remember, with 45 fights and the other side of that coin. Pratchett. With only 19 fights. Blood from the nose, blood from the mouth of Pratchett. Swelling above and below the left eye. And a couple of good left hands again from Chavez right out of the face. Is this one-sided and the fighter losing really has no chance to win except by a knockout okay, in my little. judgment the fight should be stopped to protect that fighter it's as it's as bad or worse than a knockdown for him to keep going on like this don't say anything the fight is about to be over you have won this fight but now it's up to you to do it by KO or by the by decision then you have to work on it but do it slowly because you already uh, won this fight and it all depends on how you feel. So it's up to you. If you feel strong, knock him out. If you if you feel a little tired, so... And there you see Ali, Muhammad Ali in the middle, looking pretty well, Mr. T on the right. With a couple gold chains. <laughs> <laughs> I think it way. I think neither, neither one of these 130 pounders could stand up straight with all that gold on them. <laughs> that was Ali's daughter who he was with. I also saw John Thompson, the Georgetown basketball coach, in the audience. A real super heavyweight at 6'10. This is the 11th round, WBC Super Featherweight Championship, and there's no question about who's going to win it, the champion, Julio Cesar Chavez. It's been an extremely lopsided fight since the middle of the fight. 
It took Chavez about four or five rounds, I'd say, to master Dwight Pratchett and figure out where his punches were coming from. And once he did, for Dwight Pratchett, the challenger, it has been all downhill. Between the, from the eighth round up until now, it appeared that the fight could be stopped at any given moment. And what happens, Pratchett comes out and uh, he puts on a little show. And then this is what happens later on. Chavez takes control and dominates the rest of the round. I completely agree with Larry Merchant, though, that there's really nothing to be gained here. There's no reason that this fight should go on this far. Look at this. Listen to the sound of body punches. He punches like a welterweight. Pratchett may be about to go here. Get your hands on. And it's not as much, not, it's not really the, uh, the shots to the head, it's the body shots that's going to take his toe. Three punch combination again by Chavez. Remember in his corner, they said if he feels strong enough, go for the knockout. Obviously, Chavez feels strong enough. Come on, punch. Turn him loose. You have to wonder what's keeping Pratchett up. He's taken an awful beating in the last four rounds. And as I mentioned, he's fighting a heavy-handed fighter. That straight right hand continues to hurt Pratchett every time he drills it to the body. Straight right hand. Chavez just continued to pound on Dwight Pratchett as we near the end of the 11th round. A lot better, a lot better. How are you fighting him? You're doing it well, very well. You want to get hit? Come up here and get hit in the nuts? What my You can see what's happening in the corner. They're complaining of low blows. Sick is not too high, right on his belly button. Pull the goddamn pants up where they're supposed to be instead of screaming. This is the last round, Mike. You're winning this fight, but it's going to be by decision. There's no way. Uh, you are winning. Stand up, stand up, come on. Dwight Pratchett is paying a high price to be able to go home and say, I went the full distance. Chavez looks just as fresh as he did in the first round. Three minutes of boxing left and they just can't go too fast. Chavez wants that knockout, Barry. You see the intestine in his eye. And once more, Dwight Pratchett holding with the left hand. He has a look in his eyes. He wants to finish his hand off. Got and, the scissor? Uh, Davy Pearl is talking about some tape that's loose on the glove of Dwight Pratchett. Davy Pearl definitely taking control okay. of this fight. Put, it on, put another oh, piece guy. right here. And there is a lot of inexperience in the corner of Dwight Pratchett that shows. Pearl is oh, following the okay. traditions okay. of boxing, the rules of boxing, by allowing this fight to go right on. Uh, because Pratchett is yeah. offering yeah. some resistance, is right. throwing a few feeble yeah. punches yeah. at this yeah. stage yeah. of the fight. But by any common sense, he ought to stop okay, the fight. Okay, let's go. So Chavez continues his search for the knockout, and Pratchett continues to try to prove that he could go 12 rounds with the champion. And that's about the only story there is in this fight. Chavez is now really going to work now. Both hands. And again, the left 
Tamp forces Pratchett back into the ropes. Another combination, and that puts Pratchett bouncing off the ropes in the neutral corner. He's in trouble. His legs are gone. Uh, you can tell it now. Starting to buckle. Unsteady. And another combination, and down goes Pratchett. Hey, David Perry is stopping it. Well, it ruled a slip. Call it a slip. Half push, but half he, punch. He's ready to go now for sure. Now this is when David Pearl is going to keep a close eye on Pratchett. Now, really, that was a good opportunity to have stopped the fight. Now there's one minute to go. see good boxing, but I don't like to see this. No, there's nothing that you can say in a positive note other than the performance of Chavez about this fight at all. You certainly have to applaud Pratchett's courage here. He's called too tough, but sometimes people can be too tough for their own good. Too tough for too long. Trouble in a neutral corner. And it is over. So Pratchett has gone the distance. And Chavez will get the W. Pratchett, a beaten fighter. Here's one that there is absolutely no suspense in the decision. That is Pratchett's corner. And he is going to be a sore puppy tomorrow, Ray. Well, he took some shots, body shots, that it seemed like a heavyweight was throwing him. So Dwight Pratchett goes the distance. Let's take a look at some of the highlights from this last round. And here is the closest that Chavez came to a knockout. That was a right hand that drove Pratchett back into the ropes. Well, throughout this fight, Pratchett had this unorthodox defense. In fact, the right hand there put Pratchett in a little trouble. And as we see here, Chavez not letting up. And that knockdown was ruled a slip. And I think rightly so by Davey Pearl. As you can see, the two punches pushed him back. Then he got his legs tangled and went down. So it wasn't a knockdown, just a slip. Right now, let's go up to the ring announcer. Chuck Hall has the official decision. Ladies and gentlemen, here is the decision of the judges. Judge Paul Smith scores 118-110. Senor Donante scores 117-111. And Senor Valesco scores 120-109 for the winner and still WBC Super Featherweight Champion of the World, Julio Cesar Chavez.